Laon considered only as a glial cell of mechanical support to the retinal neurons, MGSCs is also a fascinating biochemical laboratory indispensable for the maintenance of homeostasis and hydration of the retina. Its role in the pathogenesis of macular edema is primordial. Feliciana Menna graduated in Naples and, after initial studies in statistics, began her specialization first at the Pax Eye Center and now at the Cantonal Hospital of Lugano. We often discuss embryology with her, convinced that the study of retinal formation can bring deeper knowledge in understanding the development of certain maculopathies. The word to you, Feli. Hi, I am Feliciana Mena, and I'm going to talk about embryology and immunohistochemistry of the Mueller cells. The presence of the human macula was discovered by Buzzi in 1782. The presence of the human phobia was discovered in 1791 and described by Somering. Shortly after, Boots in 1795 described that the phobia centralis is not a hole but a localized thinning of the retinal tissue. The macula is an elliptically shaped area, about 5.5 mm in diameter, which includes the foveal, parafoveal and perifoveal retina. The fovea comprises the foveola proper and the central fovea walls. The parafovea includes the peripheral fovea walls and the perifovea is the area between the margins of the parafovea and the macula. The foveola does not contain inner retinal layers and the fovea walls are the sites of the thickest retina. The location and sites of the ambo, the area of the light reflex at the central concavity of the floor of the foveal pit, depends upon the shape of the foveal pit and the angle of the incoming light. It's really interesting to focus on the morphological development of the human fovea because understanding the structure of the primate fovea can help to understand the beautiful mechanism underlying the human vision. Here you can see a model of fovel development. At 24th fetal week there is the presence of the area centralis with a domed ganglion cell layer. At 28 fetal week, there is the presence of the foveal pit. The foveal pit is proposed to be formed by a vertical contraction of the centralmost Mueller cells. After widening of the foveal pit, likely mediated by retracting astrocytes, Hele fibers are formed by horizontal contraction of Mueller cell processes in the outer plexiform layer and the centripetal displacement of photoreceptors. By centrifugal displacement of the inner retinal layers, which increases the transparency of the central foveal tissue, the primate fovea interna improves the quality of the image received by central photoreceptors. At the birth, the foveal pit is a deep bowl, but still all retinal layers are present in the center. The central cones form a monolayer of cell somata in the outer nuclear layer, and the helle fiber layer begins to develop. At 8 postnatal week, there is the formation of the foveola. The foveola is formed by cone and Mueller cells and is composed of four layers, the inner layer, the Henle fiber layer, the outer nuclear layer and the layer of the outer cone cell processes. The inner layer of the foveola, which fills the bottom of the foveal pit, 
is mainly composed of Mueller cell somata and processes. In addition to improving the optical properties of the foveola, the specialized foveolar Mueller cells may provide the structural stability of the central fovea. At 16th postnatal week, there is the formation of the fovea externa. The fovea externa, the pyramid-like indention into the foveolar tissue, which is created by the elongated central cone receptors, contains the foveal cone mosaic and corresponds with the road-free site of the highest visual equity. The tip of the fovea externa, which is located in the foveolar center, indents the foveola, resulting in a decreased length of the light path between the inner retinal surface and the receptor segments. Because the foveola is largely road-free, the primate fovea is blind at night. Heli fibers play a role in accommodation and fixation by causing flattening and deepening of the foveal pit. Mueller cells of the fovea walls are connected by horizontal side processes within the inner part of the outer plexiform layer. These side processes form a horizontal layering structure in the outer plexiform layer. Horizontal contraction of Mueller cell processes within the outer plexiform layer will produce traction on the Henle fibers. Centrifugal displacement of Henle fibers will alter the slope of the outer limiting membrane in the foveola and the shape of the fovea externa. Perhaps the wave-like appearance of Henle fibers, often seen in histological sections, indicates the capability of a displacement of Henle fibers. Mueller cells in the fovea slope and parafovea display a set shape because of the elongation of their outer processes, which run more or less horizontally through the Henle fiber layer. The somata of Mueller cells in the foveola lie in the innermost layer. The thin inner processes of these cells form an elaborated plate along and below the inner limiting membrane and surround the cystoid spaces in this layer. The outer processes run through the outer nuclear layer of the foveola up to the outer limiting membrane. The cytoplasm of these processes becomes increasingly dispersed. The fovea externa is the indention in the outer foveolar tissue created by the elongated central cone photoreceptors. Here you can see the shape and cellular organization of the mature primate retina. In the first image, you can look at a scanning electron microphotograph of the fovea of a monkey. The extremely high peaking density of cone inner and outer segments in the photoreceptor segment layer, the complex centrifugal cores of their axons crowded in the LA fiber layer are well illustrated in association with the absence of the ganglion cell, inner plexiform, inner nuclear and outer plexiform layers. In the second image, the Mueller cell processes are visualized by Vimentin immunohistochemistry. The processes run in parallel to the Henle fibers. In the third image, you can look at a OCT scan of an adult human retina and you can note the shape of the foveal pit that's clearly depicted. The foveola is composed of a thin inner layer which contains the somata and the inner processes of specialized Mueller cells and that lies in front of the outer nuclear layer and the fovea externa which contains the elongated central cone photoreceptor. 
The outer nuclear layer of the foveola is composed of obliquely arranged rows of cone cell somata, which are separated from the outer limiting membrane by a layer which contains the outer fibers of cone cells and the Mueller cell processes. The white arrowheads indicate the central most road nuclei. The black arrowhead indicates the deepest point of the foveal pit. Histological studies of cystoid macular edema have shown that the location of the extracellular fluid is usually in one or both of two layers. In the inner nuclear layer and the photoreceptor inner connecting fiber layer or handlens layer in the outer retina sometimes erroneously called the outer plexiform. In the case of large amounts of fluid being present in this region, it may also disrupt the outer nuclear layer. The recent introduction of OCT shows the cyst as areas of low or no signal, with occasional high signal elements breaking the retinal layers. This is a case of cystoid edema, and here you can see a beautiful horizontal section through the foveolar region that reveals the virtual absence of the inner limiting membrane, large empty cystoid spaces, degeneration of neurons and Mueller's fibers, as well as the separation of the foveolar cones from the pigment epithelium due to a shallow retinal fold. The central foveola allows a short pathway of the image from the inner retinal surface to the central photoreceptors without light scattering at inner retinal layers. The central foveal walls may have an image magnifying function. The peripheral retina does not provide image magnification. The primate fovea is a retinal specialization for high-resolution color vision. The centrifugal displacement of the inner retinal layers away from the path of the incoming light and the absence of blood vessels may improve the quality of the visual image received by the highly packed cone photoreceptors in the foveola. There is an increasing knowledge regarding the important role of Mueller cells and astrocytes in the foveola development and function, and pathogenic role of Mueller cell dysfunction in the development of age-related macula disorders. OCT, in combination with other techniques such as microscopy on histological preparations, may provide novel insights into the pathomechanism of foveal functioning and dysfunctioning. Here, the bibliography of my work, a better understanding of the molecular, cellular and mechanical factors involved in the developmental morphogenesis and the structural stabilization of the fovea, may help to explain the pathogenesis of foveal hypoplasia and macular holes. Maria Cristina Savastano works at the Jamali University Hospital in Rome. For years, she has been involved in promoting NGOCT publishing high-level scientific articles but also promoting these new discoveries didactically through the organization of very valid conferences. As a specialist in the vascularization of the retina and OCT, it seemed appropriate to entrust her with the chapter on vascular plexi. I would like to take the opportunity to introduce a concept that seems to me to be basic. As you all know, the myelination of axons in the optical tract stops at the lamina cribrosa. Myelin of axons produced by oligodendrocytes is a great source of nourishment for neuronal intracerebral activity. The absence of myelin in the human retina 
which is not myelinated in contrast to the rabbit, for example, increases the optical quality, but requires an enormous energy supply to the cells. This explains the presence of such a powerful sprain and that represented by the three capillary plexi, the secret of which Maria Cristina now explains in detail. Good morning to everyone and thank you again to Filippo Simona for the possibility to talk about this interesting uh, talk about Mueller cells and retinal vascular plexuses. For the first uh, slide, I want to uh, talk about uh, Dr. Anita Hendrickson and Dr. Andreas Brinkman. They um, spent a lot of their life about to understand the anatomy of retina and uh, the function of Muller cells. I think that uh, they are the best about uh, this uh, anatomical aspect that we know about the retina and fovea. About the fovea development, we can say that there are some differences by species, like, uh, for example, the fovea aspect and features. For example, in the, some species, we can say that uh, convex, convex clivate fovea are present in uh, these particular animals. And uh, probably um, this is uh, uh, due to improved image fixation and uh, sensitivity. In differences to the fovea features of the humans or the harder animals that have a different uh, morphology like a conclicate aspect. About the, the fovea development, we can see that this particular aspect can be uh, observed for the vascular aspect that are particular in fovea because we have an avascular zone. In the similar portion, we have the road-free zone. Uh, similarly, uh, the Mueller cells uh, in development make uh, a particular confirmation during uh, fovea development uh, with the displacement uh, in uh, radial position. The architectures uh, of the Mueller cells uh, are very um, uh, singular in uh, retina because the Mueller cells grow, go through the entire retina vertically. And we can observe that the little feet of the Mueller cells um, make part of the portion externally in uh, inner limited membrane and external limited membrane. But uh, how is the distribution of Mueller cells in fovea? We can see that uh, this uh, um, distribution of Mueller cells in fovea make a particular confirmation and particular features that take name like Z-shaped distribution. These particular aspects um, are involving in the light process and in particular the nearly direct photoreceptor cells of the light too. What about the Mulex cells function? Uh, at the beginning of the study of Muller cells, um, a lot of researchers talk about that the Mueller cells had just a structural stability. On, uh, on the, uh, during the new research, they say that uh, the Mueller cells have a lot of functions for the homeostasis, for the optical function, for improving the light transmission, and to reduce chromatic aberration. The Mueller cells took uh, a lot uh, of uh, contact with the old neuroretinal cells, but uh, with the retinal vessels too, like uh, in these uh, slides. The histology of uh, retina and macula took a lot of information during the, the time, and in particular with the introduction of spectral domain, OCT because we had uh, actually the possibility to study the retinal anatomy and fovea in vivo. 
we can observe, like in an international nomenclature consensus, the particular disposition of all the retinal layer, the RPE layer, and the choriocapillary and choroid layers. How is the light in a vascular plexus in macula? We can see here that the distribution of the vascular plexus are located in particular region, like here for superficial capillary plexus, intermediate capillary plexus, and deep capillary plexus. Uh, Campbell and uh, others uh, researchers described uh, the particular distribution of all the retinal vascular plexuses, and they recognized uh, the superficial capillary plexus, the intermediate capillary plexus, and deep capillary plexus, and they um, uh, described uh, even the possibility to make uh, in um, association uh, these uh, different plexuses in complex, superficial vascular complex and deep vascular complex. What about the possibility to see the, this teeny and uh, very fine distribution of retinal plexus, like in this uh, slide of an electron microscope? Now we have the possibility to see the deep nectars, vascular nectars, that are very dense With the OCT structural and OCT angiography that make uh, the real possibility to study the, the tissue and its relative vascularization into the structure. What about the possibility to study in particular the plexuses? We had in past the fluorescein angiography, the, the, the possibility to study the vascular plexuses, but they are overlapped and they need the fluorescein angiography need the dye injection. With the OCT angiography, we have now the possibility to study OCT superficial network and deep network separately, without injection. We described, for example, these particular features of superficial vascular plexus and deep vascular plexus that are similar for all the healthy patients. We observed that uh, the superficial plexus had a spider web aspect and uh, deep vascular plexus had a teeny aspect like a small plex fans. Thank you to Bonin et al. researcher. We, uh, we know that these arteries and veins are strictly correlated in vertical and horizontal interconnection. Generally, we study the deep vascular plexus alone, but we have to know that deep vascular plexus um, are uh, not only the only one plexus in the uh, inner part of a proportion. And in particular, we can see that uh, in the upper form of the plexus, we have the intermediate plexus. Like in the down layer, we have the deep, the real deep plexus. Clinically, by the HCT, we actually can't observe the real difference one each other, and so in the clinical practice, we define the deep plexus as one plexus that are the deep plexus. Histologically, uh, now we can see that uh, the image of OCT and geography are really similar to the uh, histological characteristic of human circulation uh, about the superficial plexus, about the intermediate plexus, and about the deep plexus too. This is an uh, overlap uh, information of uh, in vivo information and OCT and geography that are very similar to understand and to investigate what happened in these layers. Another aspect that we can observe in OCT angiography and in vivo analysis of the retina, the capillary free zone. 
that are located only around the capillary plexus. This is possible because the interconnection all around the capillary free zone are absent because the homeostasis is granted by the diffusion of materials all around the artery. The changes in Mueller cells and retinal vascular plexus can be observed in several disorders. We talk about the macular edema, neovascularization, beta retinal interface, and macular hole. What about the macular edema? We can observe here the particular distribution of foveal cystic that are all around the retinal spaces and in particular follow the aspect of the molar cells. Actually, we don't know if the uh, fluid is into the molar cells or uh, around the molar cells. Anyway, we can see that the most important involved protein during this process are the aquaporin, and in particular the number four aquaporin, that are involved in this uh, disease process. What about the neovascularization? We can see that uh, we can observe the, the proretinal neovascularization in which the Mueller cells produce the, the vascular endothelial glow factor and the other mediators that are involved in the formation of the new vessels, uh, proretinal and uh, into, into the vitreo, and uh, not uh, into the ischemic retinal parenchyma. The difference is in choroidal neovascularization, in which the membrane adheres to the neurodetina via, uh, via hypertrophic uh, mirror cell process. About the vitreoretinal interface disorder, we can observe that other cells are involved, and in particular, we observed that the mirror cells became the skeletal of the migration of the proliferation in upper of the retina. In the um, vitro retinal interface traction, we can see that the Mueller cells cone maintained fovea integrity in case the vitro foveal traction. In differences of foveal pseudocysting that are due to the detachment of horizontal layer of Mueller cells from cone and uh, other nuclear layer. Epiretinal membrane are involved in this particular process and the Mueller cells are the key uh, with the other cells for the traction and sometimes uh, we can observe some uh, art particular alteration even in the external other part of the retina like in the formation of uh, uh, accumulation of uh, lipofuscin uh, under the retina, like in this case. What about the macular hole and emphasis scan? We uh, observed that this particular aspect are uh, extremely uh, repeatable by immunohistochemical of the Mueller cells analysis. In fact, we say that uh, the distribution of edema are uh, particular um, took particular morphology and features if are located in a outer nuclear layer or in an inner nuclear layer. In fact, if the distribution of edema are uh, in the outer nuclear layer had petaloid aspect in difference of inner nuclear layer that a cylindrical aspect. This is observable very well by Anfang scan, like in this case, in which the slab are corresponding in order nuclear layer and inner nuclear layer. Cylindric aspect if the slab is in correspondent of the inner nuclear layer, and petaloid aspect are if are located in the order nuclear layer. The Müller the macular hole and OCT angiography reveal an overlapping aspect of the, the, uh, the distribution of this aspect that are related to the sliding of vascular layers in correspondence of the 
the, the layer that we analyzed. We demonstrated and reported this aspect in a paper with, in collaboration with the Professor Rizzo, in which the emphasis aspect of the Mueller cells uh, anatomy alteration and the edema distribution that are related to the vascular aspect too. This aspect of a CT angiography image are, the, are due to the vascular sliding all around the cystic space. What about the choroid? We know from the uh, histological study that uh, the choriocapillaris and the choroid are very, very um, important for the retinal support. And we know that, that the choriocapillary are very uh, are constituted by very tiny aspect and very tiny uh, vessels um, um, down. Um, um, in correspondence of uh, the, uh, the Brook membrane. After we have the subtle layer that are intermediate uh, diameter and the big layer vessel constituted by Haller layer. So, in conclusion, we can say that Mueller cells and retinal choroidal circulation integrity are crucial for retinal function. We can say that several functions of mural cells are still unknown, and uh, now we have the possibility to study the vascular analysis in vivo by OCT angiography without dye uh, injection, and uh, that is can uh, be uh, simply incorporated to the clinical practice.